Time for chapter five, Midnight Howl by Claire Dutton, Hutton, <laughs> published by Scholastic. Chapter five, dun, 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 dun. Here we go. After school, I called my mom from the payphone by the office. My cell phone didn't work at school either. Looking at the mountains surrounding the town, I figured I might as well give up on trying to use my phone in Wolf Valley. When I asked my mom about staying for the astron astronomy club, she hesitated. Marisol, I'm glad you found something you enjoy at school already, but I haven't rented a car yet. Molly and Mike are being really generous letting us stay here. I don't think we should ask them to make special trips to drive you around. Uh-oh. Luckily, I had talked to Jack in social studies that afternoon, and he told me that he was already staying for cooking club. Not only would he also need a ride later, but there was actually an activities bus that turned the page, turned the page, that would drop us all off. So I could tell my mom that no one was going to have to make a special trip for me. Once she stopped worrying that I was going to be a bad guest, she was really excited that the Wolf Valley had an astronomy club. See, she said, I knew this was going to be a great semester. <laughs> Whatever, mom, I said laughing. It's only been a day, but I was happy. I felt shy again in room 204, where the astronomy club meeting was being held. There were about 15 kids milling around, and the only one I recognized was Lily. Hmm. She was sitting at a desk, flipping through a notebook. There was a teacher at the back of the room, but he had his head down and looked like he was correcting papers, not really ready to start a meeting. New girl, said a boy standing near the door. He looked me up and down. Come on in. He bared his teeth at me, showing me his braces and a chunk of green stuff caught in them. We're ready for some new blood. He put an arm over the lower half of his face and did a vampire impression. Ha 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 ha. Lily looked up at me. Shut up, Anderson, she said and smiled at me. Hi, Marisol. Come sit with me. The boy with the braces mimicked her. Shut up, Anderson. Shut up, Anderson. Where's Anderson going to feel the love? But he stopped bothering me. I sat down at the desk next to Lily. Thanks, I said, relieved. No problem, she replied with a smile. We're just about ready to get started. I'm president, and let me tell you about the meetings. I glanced at the teacher at the back of the room. Oh, <laughs> Lily said, Mr. Samuels just shows up because we need a club sponsor. He's not all that interested in astronomy. We really run the club ourselves. So, she slapped a paper down on the desk in front of me. Looking down, I saw a list that read, Fabric of Space, Steady State versus Expanding Universe, Human Space Exploration, Eclipse, Star Types, and Star Life Cycle, Comets. These are just some ideas for topics, Lily said. Every week, someone gives a presentation. If there's something else you want to talk about that's not on the list, that's okay, too. Um, unless it's not about astronomy. Somebody wanted to give a presentation on star signs and romance one time, which wasn't really the same thing. She giggled a little as she put down another piece of paper, which had another list of topics, each with a person's name next to it. I saw that today someone named Becca Thompson was giving a presentation on black holes. Hmm. Wow, I said. You're really organized. I was surprised. Lily had been quiet at lunch and seemed like she took her time with everything, even smiling. I hadn't thought of her as the take charge kind of person. The science club I was in back in Austin was totally run by the teacher, not the students. As Lily straightened the papers, I noticed a small golden brown birthmark on her arm in the shape of a crescent moon. It was unusual and sort of pretty. The moon shape, huh, was so perfect for the president of the astronomy club that I almost said something like, hey, with a moon birthmark, you'll never have to get a tattoo. Luckily, I bit that back at the last minute. <laughs> she might not think that it was funny. And the last thing I needed was somebody else here thinking that I was weird. Clearly, Haley already had. I'll do comments, I told her, but give me a few weeks. I wasn't thrilled about the idea of talking in front of a bunch of people, but I would worry about that later. She wrote down a date in December and then stood up and looked around. Guys, she said. Everyone stopped talking and turned to her. Becca, she called out, you're up. Becca is talking about black holes, everybody. A skinny girl with messy black curls went to the front of the room and shifted uncomfortably from foot to foot. 
Um, she said, well, black holes are places with such strong gravity that nothing can escape, not even light. She went on, and as she talked, she relaxed and spoke more easily. She knew a lot about her topic and even brought in illustrations from the Hubble Space Tel Telescope website. The amazing thing was how interested everyone was. No one was whispering or napping or passing notes. They were listening and raising their hands to ask questions. Back home, kids at a science club meeting would have been mostly interested, but somebody probably would have been zoning out and somebody else probably would have been passing notes. It wasn't always easy to pay attention after a long day of school. Because my dad and I studied it together, astronomy was really special to me, even back when I was a little kid. My friends in science club back home liked science, and a lot of them were interested in astronomy, but not like this. I felt a delight of thr a thrill of delight, not a delight of a thrill. I felt a thrill of delight. Yes, here in Montana, I had fallen into some sort of alternate universe where everybody liked science just as much as I did. When Becca finished talking, we applauded and Lily got up. That was awesome, she said. Thanks, Becca. Next week, Tyler's talking about exoplanets. Yay! She gathered up some of the papers on her desk. Okay, moving on to announcements. As you know, our trip to Glacier National Park is two weeks from Friday. If friends want to join us, that's great. It's lots of fun. Um, and the more people who go, the cheaper the trip will be for everyone. There's a full moon tonight, so it should be waxing gibbous and almost full again then. If it's not raining, that'll be nice. <laughs> now that we were talking about the field trip instead of black holes, Mr. Samuels got to his feet. If you haven't gotten a permission slip, see me, he said sternly. No one can attend the field trip without a signed form from their parents. And remember, only students who attend the school can join us on the field trip. No friends from outside. Everyone started getting their stuff together, and I hurried over to Mr. Samuels to get a permission slip. When I finished talking to him, I found Lily waiting for me. So what'd you think? She said. It was great, I said enthusiastically. I can tell I'm going to have to find out a lot about comets if I'm going to talk without totally embarrassing myself, though. Are you taking the activities bus? Lily asked as she picked up her pink backpack. Yep, I said. Are you? She nodded. We'd better hurry to catch it. I felt ridiculously pleased with myself at the beginning of the day. I hadn't known anyone but Jack and Haley, and now here I was walking down the hall with a potential friend after a club meeting, just like I'd been in this school forever. Tell me about the camping trip, I said. It's awesome, Lily replied, her eyes sparkling. We take a ton of kids for the weekend in Glacier, Glacier National Park. We bring in telescopes and look at constellations, the moon, Jupiter, Venus, everything that's visible. Last year, we also read myths about the moon and the stars. A bunch of teachers, chaperones, and we roasted marshmallows and do the whole cookout, camp out thing. I'm pretty sure that Jack and his friends are already signed up, and so are Amber and Bonnie. You should totally come. Oh, I definitely will, I said. I mean, I'm assuming that my mom lets me, but I don't know why she wouldn't. The skinny boy with the braces, who had been all new girl, new girl, caught up and walked up with us. I can't wait for the trip, he said. I've got a ghost story that I've been working on. It's going to have sixth graders running home to their mommies. <laughs> Lily sighed. Anderson, do you mind? We're having a conversation here. I couldn't believe it. And he actually stopped talking. She turned to me. Do you have a telescope? We'll try to bring as many as we can so everybody gets to use them. Yeah, I've got one. I'll be glad to bring it on the trip, I said. I lugged it along with my carry-on on the plane, even though my mom thought I should leave it at home. I didn't realize there was a full moon tonight until you said so. Maybe I'll set up the telescope outside. Hmm, I haven't gotten a chance to use it here yet, and the stars are way more visible than they are at home. Lily frowned. Oh, it's not really the best idea to go alone at night right around Wolf Valley especially during a full moon. I stopped walking. How come? Anderson stopped to laugh, lurched forward at me with his crooked hands into his claws. Because of the werewolves, he said menacingly. Werewolves. Oh no. That's chapter five.